How many of you are attending my uh, session for the first time? Okay, all the people in the back. You are attending my session for the first time. Okay. See, in this session, we are going to discuss about what are the career choices you have after you complete your B.Tech. Okay. So, what are your future plans? How many of you are planning to go into software companies? All of you. Okay. What kind of companies? Yes. Bosch. Okay. And how many of you are planning to go into Facebook? How many of you are planning to go for Facebook interviews? <coughs> no? Twitter? Amazon? Uh, who is paying the highest salaries? Google? Facebook? So we were discussing about various PSUs. There are different PSUs which are available. Uh, as I told you, there are Maharatna PSU, Miniratna PSU and Navratna PSU. So there are 254 PSUs in the country. And some of these PSUs are taking technical entries, some of these PSUs are taking non-technical entries. And out of these 254 PSUs, approximately 103 PSUs are recruiting from gate examination. And those 103 PSUs, I th when I'm saying 103 PSUs, that means either they are recruiting directly or some of these PSUs are recruiting indirectly. When I'm saying indirectly, that means whatever the syllabus they are going to cover in their examination, that exact same syllabus, or we can say whatever the syllabus is there for gate examination, that exact same syllabus will come in the PSU examination, right? And apart of this, if you want to go for any uh, government organization, like if you want to go for BS, BARC, DRDO, and ISRO, if you want to, for these organizations, these organizations conduct their own examination. For example, in BARC, the examination name is OCES and DCES. For DRDO, it is CEP, TM, SEPTEM and ISRO is, uh, uh, does also contain their own examination. In the same way, uh, this year, in 2017, uh, there are two vacancies for BSNL. BSNL recruited for TTA and JTO entries. TTA is tec Teaching Technical uh, Telecom Technical Assistant and JTO is Junior Telecom Officer. So for TTA, they conducted their own examination and the syllabus was similar to that. And for JTO, JTO is the Junior Telecom Officer. And this junior telecom officer, they are recruiting through gate examination examination only. That means whatever score you are going to get or whatever your cutoff, if you are going to clear the cutoff and whatever score you are going to get based on that cutoff and your rank, you are going to get an interview call from these PSUs, right? So now let me summarize these points here. I'm saying uh, if you want to go for technical entries, either you can go for private companies or you can go for PSU, that is public sector undertakings, or you can go for uh, government organizations. And even when I'm saying government organization, there's other entries also, uh, which are for from EAC, that is Engineering Service Examination. EAC was formerly known as Indian Engineering Services, that is IES. Now it is EAC because the name was colliding with Indian Economical Services. So now this EAC examination, uh, because uh, with this examination, uh, they are recruiting for uh, different various uh, uh, department, governmental department, like Indian Railways. They are going to take entries for inter Indian Railway as an executive engineer, or you can say as an engineer using the EAC examination. But the limitation is ESC examination is only for four vacancies that is mechanical, civil, electrical and electronics and communication. Then we have SSCJ that is Staff Selection Commission Junior Engineer Examination that is for uh, Diploma level students as well as for B.Tech level students. Nowadays uh, the trend is changing. Even the B.Tech and M.Tech level students are applying for this uh, SSCJ examination. A part of this we have uh, even if you want to go for tech teaching uh, side, for example, if you, if you want to make a career as assistant professor or as a professor in a very good engineering college, then it is important for you to at least uh, do M.Tech or M.E. or M.S. and after that you can choose to do Ph.D. When I'm saying M.Tech, what is the basic and core difference between M.Tech and M.S.? M.Tech is more a job-oriented program. So there are different uh, M.Tech programs which are available. For example, in IIT Bombay. There's a M.Tech for R.A. 
and then it's mtech ta tm is it is a teaching assistant mtech teaching assistant that means that means you will be working as a teaching assistant for the next two years during your mtech and when i'm saying mtech ra that means you will be working as a research assistant and this mtech ra is a three year course and mtech ta is a two year course a part of this you can also have ms ms is master of sciences and this course is completely based on research purposes or you can say this course is like a mini phd when i'm saying mini phd it means that your uh, this is a one two and a half year of course where first year first year is totally dedicated towards your studies and the next one and a half year you'll be dedicating towards doing some kind of research and this research can you can extend this research up to two years and you can complete your ms within three years also so this ms program is more like a mini phd in that sense so if you plan to go for phd then then you can go for ms program that is also a very good program or if you plan to go for research or additional research purposes then later on you can choose to do mtech ra that is research assistantship and this research assistantship is available in different iits so a part of uh, doing the if, if you want to go for higher studies then a part of gate examination you can also uh, uh, get admissions in mtech using the university specific examinations like we have triple it hyderabad they conduct their own examination we have vit they conduct their own examination as well as some colleges they are also conducting their own examination okay so assume so this is completely like you you are planning for masters and the, the, see what happens is most of the students they believe that you are doing masters that means you are only planning for teaching right it is not necessary that if you are doing masters or mtech they are planning for teaching the uh, different iits the job vacancies the job opportunities after mtech is very very high or you can say it is very a wide range of job vacancies which are available after doing mtech and when i'm saying very very wide range that means if some some of the companies they recruit specifically the candidates who have done masters and they recruit them for research and r&d purpose or cancer research and development purposes like if you discuss about the cisco company you now cisco they prefer they mostly prefer taking masters the candidate who have completed their masters degree because they the, most of the work which they are going to do um, as 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 an employee in that company that is mostly based on research there are some jobs which are available for development purposes also but but still uh, there are some uh, companies which mostly prefer candidates for research purposes okay so in the same way uh, for phd all that matters is what kind of research you are doing it does not matter that uh, you are doing a master degree or you are doing a bachelor's degree all that matters is what kind of work you are doing if 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 you are not doing any specific work any good work then you will not be able to uh, you know uh, do some uh, do well so even if you are doing phd and if you choose a specific uh, some kind of topic which is mo most which is financially viable after completing your phd then still uh, you can get uh, very good job opportunities in very good companies after that okay so uh, after this see it is uh, this when i'm saying we have uh, other entries like bank so that is bank specialist officer there are two entries number one is bank so second one is bank po this bank the, the difference between bank so and bank po is that uh, for bank po we have subjects like general studies we have quantitative aptitude we have reasoning and english for bank po so th these subjects are for bank po and for bank so when i am saying bank specialist officer for bank specialist officer the subjects are quantitative aptitude reasoning english and even your computer skills so most of the preparation which you are going to do as a technical side that preparation for gate examination is also going to help you in these examination so whatever the topics which we are going to which we are covering in our courses Uh, in our courses all those topics in all those video lectures but we are whatever we are video lectures we are producing all those video lectures we are uh, trying to create a platform where we uh, can unify all of them for example if a student is just a btech fresh out fresher or just a bit btech pass out we want to give every possible knowledge to that candidate and you want to you know you don't have to pay a lot of i mean a lot of money to uh, get all that knowledge you don't have to go to different institutions you don't have to uh, worry about traveling you don't have to worry about paying huge amount of fee or you don't have to worry about the timings whatever we are covering here you can just access all the courses all the courses which we are providing whether it is ssc j ssc uh, cgl that is staff selection commission a uh, combined graduate level examination and this examination is going to cover uh, at least 19 different departments of government like income tax excise narcotics all these departments come under ssc cgl examination we also cover uh, video lectures for uh, bank so we also cover video lectures for ugc net examination that is ugc net computer science we also cover video lectures for gate examinations and competitive programming so we are planning that for the next uh, uh, next uh, you know when next one or two years we are planning that you don't have to pay huge amount of money you don't have to pay uh, you know different fees for all these courses what we are planning is we want to give you all these courses uh, within one single fee one single unified structure you will be able to access all these courses uh, in 
you know, uh, and you don't have to search for uh, different institutions, different colleges to, you know, different institutions uh, to prepare for these examinations. Right, so we are working in this fashion. Yes, we are going to uh, achieve this goal very fast. Right now, in this in this uh, complete series of competitive programming lectures, which we uh, delivered here in the last four days, we covered uh, basic concepts of data structures, we covered basic concepts of algorithms, but after this, this huge, huge, this, the path is very long. You See, when I'm discussing about these concepts it is not necessary that you only don't have you don't have to study these concepts as a theoretical background the aim the main purpose was we want to cover these topics and we want to cover these topics in such a manner that you will be able to use this uh, this this knowledge for a practical implementation of things when i'm saying practical implementation of things that means uh, theoretical knowledge is uh, you know, theoretical knowledge is always having some kind of limitations. You want to remove that limitations and you want to give the, you whatever the best we can give. Okay, so uh, I, I hope all of you did very well in this uh, in this uh, workshop. I really enjoyed all the session and I really love, I really loved uh, teaching here. I really loved all the sessions which we have done in the last four years and I'm really grateful to the college management as well as, as, well as all the students who, you know, been, who, who's been a part of this complete session, complete content. Yeah.